Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's give the Lord a praise. Amen. We are coming to you from the Greater Refuge Global Ministries here in the city of Deland, where Bishop James Darby is our pastor. So if you're just tuning in with us, go ahead and like and share, because there's a blessing in this house. And we come to praise and magnify the Lord because we know that the Lord is good on this morning. How do you know that the Lord is your strength? Come on, let's 
and to give you praise and thanksgiving. We thank you, God, for the many blessings that you have restored upon us. We ask, God, for your forgiveness that you would have mercy upon us. Help us, God, in the name of Jesus, we pray, to be an overcome of everything that's not like you. Help us to walk, Lord, in the way that you would have us to walk in Jesus' name. We pray for this service that you would bless like only you know how to bless. Bless those who are listening, both domestically and foreign. We pray, God, that you would remember those who are sick among us. We know that you are a great healer right now in the name of Jesus. We have to stretch forth your healing virtues in the name of Jesus. Remember, God, those who are seeking you for salvation. We pray, God, that you would hold back the hand of the enemy, God. We pray for this city of the land, God, that you would just continue to touch, move like only you can move. Remember, God, our leadership from the international standpoint to our local government. We pray, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that the word of God will go forth this morning with power and demonstration that someone will cry out to you, Lord, what must I do to be saved? We thank you, God, for what you're going to do. We have a spirit of expectation. We're looking for great things. I believe you right now in the name of Jesus. Just hear our prayer and grant us thy peace. And we forever give you the praise and the glory. Receive our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. We're reading the official greetings from the Great Refuge Global Ministries. We're located at 316 South Adel Avenue in the city of Delaney. The zip is 32720. If you would like to participate in the Ministry of Giving, you may do so by the way of Giveify, and that's under the Deland Refuge. If you would like to do it by the way of PayPal, you can simply do it by the email, that email address, which is thelandrefuge386 at gmail.com. That information is pinned on the live stream. So if you want to give it to the glory of the Lord, or if you have a prayer that you need, the number of you is 386-734-2001. We just ask you to be governed, and if you just come in the first time, go ahead and like and share, because truly the presence of the Lord is in this place. Let's put our hands together. Amen. Hallelujah.
praise Him. We reach again from International for the Global Ministries, coming to you live from the Greater Refuge Church, Street 16 South Adele Avenue, and the city of the land. We appreciate all of you, both far and near, that have been in support of the ministry, especially those that have given to the global field. God is doing great things on the international front. And this church, along with the members here, and other faithful individuals, have played an important part in the success of what God is doing on the global sphere. I want to share the word of God with those of you that are here and those of you that are listening where we have been broadcast. It is a simple message. It is not a novel message to me. I've preached it over the years. For some 63 years, I've been preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many souls have come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as the Savior. Many have been delivered from death. Many have been delivered from demon powers. And God has brought the change over the years and he's still doing today what he did on yesterday's years. We ought to give God a little praise everywhere. If you're listening to me in Mexico, if you're listening in South America, Africa, Asia, these are the areas that are responding to this ministry. And those of you everywhere, lift your voice to the Lord and shout a praise to Him. You that in the house, shout a praise unto the Lord. The song said, Oh, we magnify, oh, magnify the Lord.
the 41st verse. Yet they tempted, they turned back, rather, and they tempted God. And limited the Holy One of Israel. Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They simply put a limit on God. Who is the subject? The subject was Israel, as the psalmist wrote the song. But then, today, who does it apply to? the number of people of God that God has done so much for and yet they don't trust him. They put a limit on him. Israel was a special people that God chose for himself. for himself, of people that were commissioned to love him with all the mind, the soul, love him with everything, as God loved him. John says we love him because he first loved us. God loves his people even today. But let us establish a platform for the message. Israel was a people that God had done more far than anybody on the face of the earth. No one, no one, no one. He fought battles for them. He healed them. He delivered them. He subdued kingdoms on their behalf. He brought them out of slavery, brought them across the Red Sea. He turned bitter waters sweet to satisfy his thirst. He broke the world out of the rock, rock traveled him. But prior to that, he did a, a miracle that we preach about all the time today. He opened up the Red Sea and brought them across and turned around and destroyed Pharaoh's army that was in pursuit of them to take them back to where God was delivering them from. All of this he did for them. They got hungry, and I'm trying to figure out in my mind why would it be so stiff neck, so doubtful. God sent a man from heaven and turned around and sent them millions of quails, millions upon millions, to satisfy their hunger. But here's the thing that really baffles my mind, and that is this. All these cows, all these sheep, all these goats, that went across that Red Sea 
They went across that basin too. They crossed that sea right along with those. He built it, some say two, three buildings or so. To go across that sea, they were delivered along with the Israelites. And now they get hungry. I'd rather have a feeling me gone, or pull a high stake, than have a queen. They're complaining that all oh, this fat beef, all had them was slain. And something about the mind, when it ever gets into it, it wants the mind. Something about the mind, it subjects itself to doubt. When God is able to do any and everything. They came out of Egypt wearing a size two shoe. The shoe grew along the kids' feet. For years, they had the same shoes. And they didn't go out of style. And the same code. For years. And as they got plump, the clothing got plump. So you don't understand that. Remember about 15, 20 years ago? Size 10. 16 of you now. Shaped like a cocoa cool bottle. Now it's shaped like a tulip. Time makes a change. But they had the same clothing on, same shoes, but yet they tempted God. They asked the question Can God prepare a table in the wilderness? Can He prepare a table? But all these animals, these goats, and all these cows were running down everywhere. They tempted God. And they put a limit on him. They put restrictions on God. They asked the question, can God prepare a table in the middle of the wilderness? The answer is he's has no limitations on anything that he can do. Yeah. He has the capacity of the power to work, do art, to perform without any limitations. Otherwise, there isn't anything that God can do. There's not a single thing that he doesn't have the capacity yeah. or the power to bring it into fruition because he has no merit. He declares himself as being omnipotent. Again, he has the ability to do anything. Some that have us told it all night long. Some of you that are listening to me, there have been things in your life that become a constant companion with you. You're going to bed with it. You have awakened in the midnight hours with it. It greets you in the morning. And it simply seems not to go away. But he had the ability to bring it to pass out of your life. He is God. He is El Shaddai. 
He is the Almighty. I think of him, my little frail mind, try to comprehend how he made this big world. Made this big world. He didn't have to go down town anywhere. Didn't have to counsel with anybody to get a building permit to make this world. The idea, the thought originated in his mind. And he said, I believe I'll make me a world. My God, he hung the stars out in the sky and had them sing in the midnight hour. Put the sun out there to shine through the daytime. Moon at night, galaxies and asteroids, all kinds of planets, Milky Way. My God, when the judgments came in, the water came everywhere. He spoke and said, Let there be light. Yes. He divided waters above from all those buildings. Looked out, come, and saw waters everywhere. Reached down and pulled the hilltops from beneath the floods. Looked down on the hillside that he made and dressed the hillside up in a suit of fine green dress and turned around and decorated from the top to the bottom with daisies and sunflowers. What a God, what a God, what a God. That is all he made. Looked down and Smoke and trees came into existence. And the wind blew, and the trees bowed down before him and gave him praise. What a God, what a God, what a God. When he got through all of his creation, he didn't have to go get an inspector to prove his work. He bade him pat himself on the back and say, That's good. Come and preach. He has the power. If you made all this world and all these things that you see in the sky and the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees, when you observe all of these things, you're looking at the awesomeness of God. Look to the Almighty God, one that's omnipresent, one that's omniscient. And right now he lives with his omnipotence. His power to do everything. And yet, we have a tendency to start doubting God, beginning to doubt Him. We should say to ourselves, if He did want somebody to finish it for me, He'll do it again. If He was able yesterday, He's still able. We must understand that he's omniscient. He has a knowledge of all things. You don't know, but he knows. He has the answer to every problem, every question. He has an answer. Not only that, he's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. If you get on the airplane, and tell the Lord, I thank you for being good to me this morning. He'll be with you at noon day when they get down to a foreign country. Can I get the witness because he's on the present. Now let us go back to his omniscience, knowing all things, having an answer when you have beaten your head against the wall. You pull the hairs out of your head. You cry the midnight blues. And seem like things are getting no better. But we have to take a little time out to just think. This is I'm stopping right now. I'm not lost the words. But I want you to just think. Thank you. Just think. And understand that you didn't have to answer. Didn't know how. You can do call Google. Some of y'all get Google, call Google to find out Google tell like. Hello? 
Google tell a lot of lies and y'all depend on Google. Yeah, depend on the one that has all the answers. He has the answers when you don't know how. Have you ever been in a situation where you simply don't know how? You're asking yourselves, trying to solve the problem, calling your counselor, calling your mentor, calling your pastor, calling your professor, calling your husband, your wife, and they're scratching their head just like you. They're going bold just like you, scratching their head out, trying to get an answer. But you can call the man, God, I praise you. Anybody know what his name is? Y'all know what he's thinking in Africa? You can listen to the age of South America, Mexico, across the United States. You know what his name is? His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. And he gives you an open invitation. Come unto me all ye that labor. And if you labor, I'll give you rest. I got the answer for you. You've been up all night toiling in the last year, toiling in the years before that, toiling. But the same problem and can't solve it. Just bring it on to me. Uh, because he casts out all your cares on him, for he cares for you. He has an answer because he knows. And then he avails himself. He prepares himself to be where you are, where you need. No matter where you are. He's there because he's on the present. He's on the present. He's on the present. When, when, when the doctors, Lord, I preach. When the doctors have closed, give you their final word and close that chapter of your life out and say to your family, you might as well give up. Put them in the hospice. Let them rest easy because they get ready to leave here. And sometimes they may close the door. And as family says, no visitors. Some families, oh, no visitors. Nobody can come in. Let my daddy die in peace. Let my mama die in peace. Let my loved ones die in peace. And you can't get inside. God, I preach. Inside the dying room. But Jesus can step right in. Oh God, I preach. Hallelujah. You can't close it out. You can't close it out. You can't keep it out of there. If you call it, he'll be there. He's Jehovah. Shout out. He's always present. Can somebody give him some praise? He's always there. Nobody can keep it out. Nobody can stop it. You can put all of the no transpassion signs up. But Jesus will go past that no transpassion sign and tell the devil, you're right. I'm here. My God to get the miracle that means to you. Can somebody give him some praise? Hallelujah. If you do it once, he'll do it again. And one thing he does not want his children to forget. And that is this. Don't forget to forget. Tell somebody, don't forget to forget. Remember what he did for you 10 years ago. Yeah. Hallelujah. Remember how he healed you five years ago? Remember how he turned around when it was almost impossible? Don't forget. Hallelujah. To forget. Don't forget to remember what he did for you. Don't forget what he did for you. And don't forget to remember. What he did for me. Can somebody give us a praise? Somebody might say, I remember when I didn't have a dime in my pocket. 
I remember when my lights were turned on. I remember when my house spinning to foreclosure. I remember when I lost my automobile. Oh, yeah. I remember when my wife walked out on me for another man. I remember when my husband had five kids on the side, but he gave me peace yeah. in the midst of my storm. Hallelujah. He will build peace in my valley. Oh God, I'm preaching. He turned it around, Father. And I believe whatever I get into, he's going to fix it, Father. Tell me some now. He's going to fix it, Father. Because he has the ability to do anything and everything. There's nothing too hard for as I look at Jeremiah in the darkness, Jeremiah 32, 17. He looked to the Lord in the midst of his despondency and said, Ah, Lord God, you made the heavens and you made the earth by your mighty power and your stretched out arm. And there's nothing too hard for you. There's nothing too hard for God. Can I get a witness of that? The Lord came to Sarah when she was laughing. Is there anything to us? I say that you better sit here. You better listen to me wherever you are. I'm asking you the question and give me the answer. Is there anything? Is there anything? Oh God, have mercy. Is there You can do anything. Oh God, I pray. And no thought can be withholding from you. You know everything. You can do anything. Can I get a witness with you? There's no limit what God can do. I said, there's no limit to what God can do. If it did it one time, God knows he'll do it again. If he did it for that, when he woke up down, found himself down in the line of the day, there the whole shadow stepped down in the line of the day, locked the jaws of a lion, and then had a good night's rest. Is that a too hard to do? The all of them step in to your deal. The lines are raging in your den. Turn all this in a But God will step out in the midst of everything that you're going through. Because there's nothing to offer for God. Take that name off of him. He wants you to prove him. And see that he will not make a move for you. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
will make a way. I said, you make a way. Oh, yes, you will. Do you believe me today? If you believe it, tell somebody. I know the Lord. I know you make a way. You made a way yesterday. Yesterday you made a way for me. And I know you'll make a way today. Yesterday I didn't have an answer. But I know you got the answer. Everything, all of my problems, all of my situations. I know, praise of God. Thank you. 